Hello everybody, welcome back to Insane Brit Gaming. I'm the Insane Brit and uh, today is an update video for what, July 2022? Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk about a number of topics, a lot of it related to FIFA, some of it to Chelsea Football Club of course, and uh, the playthroughs that I just played and of course the upcoming content along with my uh, opinion on uh, <clears throat> a movie or two or what shows I've been watching etc. Um, so again, I've got a list here because I'm just quite forgetful, honest to God. Um, Plus, we're talking about the Lukaku situation, but I'm not going to dwell a lot on football or FIFA, but I do have a bunch of stuff I want to say uh, regarding FIFA content, um, etc. Um, so, yeah. Um, <coughs> so, first and foremost, um, Chelsea transfers. Um, let me switch back to the camera. Uh, Lukaku has basically gone back to Inter Milan. At this point, I was thinking he would get another season at Chelsea, and it is not to be. Uh, at this point, I don't really want him back. I don't care. Yeah, I'm just like, it's not my 100 million. I'm gutted we wasted 100 million on him. Bowley's probably thinking, well, I didn't pay it, but uh, it's an asset of ours, and I don't want it to do de uh, deplete in valuation, but obviously it is. He's got 8 or 9 million euros plus bonuses uh, for when he goes back. Now, obviously, at the timing of this recording, we haven't really signed anybody. We're trying to get more people out the door. Hopefully, you know, uh, people on Twitter who I who I uh, follow, who I don't mind following, but I'm getting so bored of Kunde, Dembele, X, Y, and Z, Sterling, all being linked with us, and especially likes of Kunde and Dembele, which has been on for weeks. Sign them up, fucking confirm it, and then let's move on. I'm sick and tired of him keep retweeting the same shit it is absolutely boring i'd rather know it like two weeks ago nothing's really happened with it and then just wait until saying it actually gets confirmed Do you know what i mean uh by chelsea and that really hasn't happened um it is what it is i know i haven't kept up with tiktok or anything like that regarding uh football or anything and you know it is what it is if you follow me there um but yeah, so, you know, I'm not going to speak too much on transfers and stuff. Uh, we are looking at defenders and all this and that and uh, Delit or whatever from Juventus, which I was calling them Delight. I don't know why. I, I didn't, maybe I just didn't read it. I just blaséed it. Uh, Delit, apparently from Juventus, um, whatever, hopefully. Uh, I'd like him to come to Chelsea. Um, but hopefully, anyway, long term, we get all our targets and there's going to be some major movement uh, when it comes to... Um, to Chelsea's transfers, uh, and that's of course brings me a little bit into FIFA as well. Uh, regarding so, um, so in terms of FIFA content, FIFA t uh, FIFA simulations will uh, return in a matter of weeks, like one or two, three weeks tops, uh, and then we'll be having friendlies and stuff like that. And hopefully, I'll be making transfer. I've already moved Lukaku to Inter Milan, you know, and moving some older players out, and then of course, the, of course, uh, moving new players in. So it should be very interesting. I will redo the FIFA career mode simulation because Lukaku won't be at Chelsea and there'll be all these new players but I'll do that nearer to the beginning of the season when we've made some big transfer moves so I'll probably end up just deleting that last one that I did uh, of Chelsea because it's not accurate at all and uh, just to get a, a real representation of where we will where we will end up in the league with the players confirmed again that would be near the um, around the period of the friendlies to see what formation we play, etc, etc, who plays where, who's gone, who's in. So it should be very, very interesting. Um, so I'm just going to redo that. Also, I've got Liverpool to do as well. Um, so also, so that's going to be redone. Uh, FIFA 22 Legend Series, which I come across the other day. I, I've, I've had the opportunity to do a Legend Series. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to take some of the classic teams, uh, who, depending on who's in the Legends. And it was like AC Milan, Real Madrid players, you know, Cafu, Ronaldinho, Luis Figo, is it Luis Figo? Who played for Inter Milan. I think he played for AC Milan, I'm not too sure. I know he played for Barcelona. He played for Madrid. You know, you've got all these legendary players, like Carlos, uh, Rude Gullet. You've got some Chelsea players in there. You've got Owen, Shearer. I'm like, you know what? Let's do a legend series where I take the current team and then I play them against the le absolute legends of... Um, of the likes of Real Madrid and who we represent. Uh, but also, I was thinking about coming up in the next series as well as the Legends. I was thinking about maybe classic matches. So it would be um, kind of like Manchester United versus Legends of Manchester United players versus the Legends of Arsenal. Or, you know, the Legends of Chelsea versus the Legends of Manchester United. The Knights team with Roy Keane, Scholes, Rooney, uh, Cantona. That would be really interesting. Schmeichel in goal. You know, so uh, now these are... These haven't been very popular, I get it, but at the same time, as like someone might find them interesting. 
So, you know, I'm just trying to cover the basis of, like, it's an interesting FIFA series I can do. I'll knock it out in the preseason, all this kind of element, um, over the next couple of days, weeks, whatever, until, and then after that, guys, it'll be done, and then I won't be doing them long term, obviously. It's just something that I found kind of interesting, and maybe you guys do, maybe you guys don't. It's not been proven popular right now, I get it, but hopefully when I come up with the likes of Manchester United facing the likes of Arsenal rivals or Chelsea, you know, or Liverpool uh legends versus manchester united legends that's going to be very interesting coming up so that's uh, to happen um fifa la career mode i'm actually enjoying the career mode in america right now um i've lost a few games i've you know made some transfers some decent transfers fabregas has joined the party uh who of course left monaco uh saying it was the worst year of his life um there's a bunch of other players i can't remember all who i've signed i've also signed uh chiliani i believe his name is from juventus who we, they signed in real life so um yeah i've made that that transition of uh, he's bringing him in i've been very smart with the money uh still working with Tom predominantly with their players and just brought in a little bit of quality here and there and uh but i'm having fun with it it's quite interesting i know a lot not a lot of people have watched it i know i'm only on week two at this point uh coming up to week three uh it is what it is um again not a lot of people supporting it but it's going to be there and then I'll go, I, I think that's probably the last one i'm going to do until the next fifa comes out i think that's fair at this point um it is what it is. I think it'll be a short season as well uh that's enough for fifa content but that is all coming out and you know have you what have you um next up i want to talk about call of duty season four has started um looks all right it's quite decent i've done about the map i mean no the map's actually not too bad but whatever map you're on it all seems to be fucking campers i'm having a lot of fun with it the guns are quite decent you've got quite a few light machine guns this season uh i do do a rundown of that in um week 33 because when i do a new season season four when it kicks off i always take you guys on a, a journey of like what's going to be available to us uh like from tier one to tier 9900 whatever so i know the playstation 4 is in the background fucking making a noise like a jet engine um etc it is a pain if you're not interested in watching that segment of it you can always just jump to the gameplay where i you know start playing the game on the new map and stuff like that so uh yeah also, Modern Warfare 2, I haven't really said too much about it. I am looking forward to playing it. They do want £100 for, like, whatever edition. I'm like, Jesus Christ. I don't mind paying it. I don't care. But at the same time, I'm kind of like, I'm trying to save for a PC and stuff like that. So I don't really want to fork out money for that. But I'm going to probably have to because my channel demands that I play COD. It's a weekly series. I've got a plot. Obviously, for the FIFA Sims, I have to buy a new FIFA 23, which is fine. I love FIFA. I'm not complaining about that uh i get a lot of enjoyment out of the game uh plus the simulation so that's another chunk of money that's got to come out of my savings for my pc um i am planning on having a pc near christmas time or just maybe just over christmas i know it's a pain in the ass i keep talking about it i'm fed up with it myself um but as soon as i get that new pc i'm pretty much quids in I'm, i'll be like i'll be fine i'll be like there'll be no more talking about it there'll be an unboxing it'd be boom and then we'll talk about the ps5 as well um etc etc um yeah so modern warfare 2 definitely looking forward to um call of duty season 4 started up um i think depending on when you're seeing this video probably last week and then we'll have the next uh, video out uh, this week um also lake will finish up this week and halo 4 uh this week basically now i won't lie this month uh, just gone lake was like a a kind of relaxing game very blasé i won't lie that overall it's kind of boring to play you, you it more or less was a simulation of life where you go to work every single day and then you fucking make plans for like the weekend what are you doing on the weekend let's go see go to the cinema let's go to a barbecue let's go to the movies i don't know go on a date whatever it may have been it just felt like you were working every day and you were making little plans to escape the bullshit and it was kind of disheartening, really, in a lot of ways. But maybe that's just life in general. Uh, it felt like a simulation of life. I mean, it was interesting. Uh, but at the same time, uh, for the majority of that game, it is an indie title, I believe. Uh, it was quite boring. There's nothing that really went on there. With, like, not really a lot of drama. Just, like, relationships between characters. So, it weren't the best playthrough. And I apologise for that. It is what it is. We've had quite a few boring playthroughs. Even when it comes to AAA games with the likes of Control. Control was pretty fucking boring. Uh, the gameplay was fun. I recommend playing it. But the actual story and the watching of it and everything was boring i felt personally um halo 4 i tried to give you some action packed game i'm like you know what let's throw out halo 4 i've got to play that series i've got to end it uh before i play you know obviously the fifth one and then you've got the new one on the new gaming console whatever xbox series one x s whatever um which i haven't got but at the same time i thought well we've got to kill that series off let's go to halo 4 and then the lake was kind of boring so halo 4 will ramp it up and make it an interesting month at least counteract that kind of um 
that playthrough. And Halo 4, I don't think a lot of you watched, I think for a, a couple of reasons. Probably A, you've probably played it. Uh, B, it's very blasé. Not blasé is like boring, but it all, you don't have to really figure out where to go in that game. You can just, you know, sort of, it's like a walkthrough. You play it, you kill some enemies, and then you get to the end of the game. You're like, okay, well, whatever, you heard a fantastic story. The story is kind of blasé or bland or whatever. It's a love story or whatever, but at the same time, I didn't mind the story. I was okay with that. I, I didn't. It was. Uh, I'm fine with it. It was. It was interesting to me. Uh, a bit different. Uh, I liked the fact there was new enemy types. There was new gun types, and that that was cool to me as well. Um, the graphics were beautiful. Uh, I was very impressed with it. Um, so Halo 4 is done now, and Lake is done. That is now in the completed playthrough section of his channel, and you can click the annotations at the end of this video if you want to watch either one of them. They will be promoted, uh, as they always are, because they're now finished. Um, Upcoming playthroughs for, I think it's July, this month, uh, basically uh, is Broken Sword 5, which is a game that was given to me on Xbox uh, Game Pass. Um, it's basically a click-based game, uh, point-and-click game, sorry, and I don't really play a lot of them, but I thoroughly en en am enjoying the game. Uh, really good. Um, it's like a mystery, so it's not like, oh, like Lake, where there was nothing really going on. It's actually a mystery uh, type game, you've got to investigate and stuff like that, and figure things out. So that will help, I think a lot of people will check that game out based on if they're playing it, they don't know what to do, where to go. It is one of those games where it can be a bit of a cunt, I feel personally. Um, it is what it is. But Broken Sword 5, I haven't played any of the others, but, and I was kind of worried about that. Would it... Um, be complicated or something to jump back into into a series which has got five games in but no it's actually quite decent you don't have to play all the previous games it's a new mystery so that's kind of good uh and then to counteract that um i realized it's been about three years since i've had a proper open world game or possibly two years with assassin's creed origins or whatever Basically, I decided to play for we've got to get one of these big games out of the series already done, like done and that is GTA 3 Remastered. So I'm playing GTA 3 uh, Remastered. I never really completed the game at all. I played a couple of missions. I found it really difficult uh, back in the day, but I never completed it. I never stuck to it like that. So uh, it was going to be my first time playing GTA 3 Remastered. So that's going to be coming out as well. Um, so that's basically going to cover the period of July when it comes to playthroughs. And then, like I said, FIFA will be there, COD, simulations. But yeah, those, my two main games, uh, the two games coming out this month, it's Broken Sword 5 and GTA 3 Remastered. Um, we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm, I'm being interested to see what this month's PSN games are going to be. I'm not too sure uh, for Xbox and PSN. I did look at the PSN, uh, the thing. PlayStation Plus, they changed it, and I'll be honest with you, I, I, after about five or six games that I might want to play, I don't really care for it, I, I'm happy to just go buy the basic version, or just one up, I wouldn't buy the actual premium, I did look at the, the so-called classic games, and I weren't impressed really, uh, there weren't there weren't um, Metal Gear Solid 4 there, there wasn't any of the Metal Gear games there, I'm like, well I don't give a shit really, I don't want to play old games that are decades old, I just don't, I'm, I've done my time with that, and I'm tired, I want to kind of move on with uh, the next gen kind of scenario, and I'm already playing games that were out in 2012 and, and you know that on this channel and a lot of people moan about that but well it is what it is at this point in time because i'm trying to break through series that i haven't completed yet played and i want to enjoy them experience them put them out on the channel uh, whatever it is what it is um so that's upcoming playthroughs uh things i've been watching uh is super crooks on netflix uh it's a show i'm currently watching right now well, no i think i just finished actually pretty good show starts off like a western uh, show and then like like kind of turns anime type like um, and it really knuckles down. I hate western shows. I'm not really a big fan of western animation, um, other than Rick and Morty and then uh, Archer. So I was a little bit skeptical, uh, but this one's actually pretty good and it felt more like an anime and it was the writing's done really well. The characters were written out well. It's about a crook who basically has superpowers. No, he starts off as a hero and then he's like learns that he's actually a a crook and he's got all these abilities and he meets up with these other uh, guys who have got abilities and then they try and they try and rob people we've got heroes out there trying to catch them and stuff like that and then after he he basically gets caught and tries to change his life around and it's it's really good i don't want to spoil it but it is uh the character is really well done so i recommend super crooks uh also i would recommend uh well i say recommend i did see matrix 4 i didn't think i'd get to see it but uh, I did plan on watching it when I had the chance, but uh, it popped up and I was like, okay, I'll watch Matrix 4. 
Um, my opinions on that movie, I mean, I was skeptical because it's Matrix 4. Uh, they're just trying to rehash anything like the Jurassic Park series, etc., which is obviously the the, hor um, uh, the most the worst rated Jurassic Park recently that come out. And I've got to be honest with you, Matrix 4 is a movie that doesn't need to exist. Um, it really doesn't. Uh, it's not a bad film, but it's nothing of notable variety there. Like, I, I can talk about the Matrix films, like, where, you know, uh, Morpheus was having a fight in, in with, um, with the one or Neil in the karate thing, right, years ago. They rehashed that. They brought that back. Like, they was just taking bits and pieces from the previous movie and putting it in to shoehorn it to say oh let's bring it to the next generation 20 years later it wasn't as good um it wasn't as memorable uh take those little moments out and the fights that they did have were few and far between and you didn't care to remember any of them you really didn't stick with the main three i would say and you, you look at the main three and go wow they're fantastic watch this one and you're like where's the where's the iconic fights you know the guy in white in 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 uh in uh, I think three or whatever, you know, he was he was like fighting Neil. He was like, oh yeah, I'd had to test you. That was a brilliant fight. That was just him testing him. There's nothing really stand out about this movie when it comes to the fight scenes. Um, I did find it interesting that, that Neil was basically making a game of the Matrix, a triple, a series of it. And I felt that the, the director, the Wachiski brothers, which or whatever, I think they're now sisters. They become trans or whatever. Basically, they were sending a message. Uh, to, the, to the audience, I found this very interesting. I, I cottoned on to it. I felt, basically, Neil had made the Matrix games, right? And the company said they want to make a fourth one. But Neil, or the one, was like, nah, I'm done with the series. And he was like, no, 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 no. We either do the, the fourth game, or they make it without us. And I think that was a message. Uh, because the director was one of the sisters or trans sisters because it was two of them, right? It was two of them that made the movies together. Now there's only one brother slash sister, whatever, right? Trans, whatever, right? And basically what it was, I think it was, they were saying, look, we made these characters, but Sony kind of own them now at this point. They can do what they want. I don't know if it was Sony or maybe it was Warner Brothers, but they can do what they want. So basically either I got involved and, and, did the narrative and made this movie or they were going to do it without us either way we was going to get matrix 4 we couldn't do nothing about it so i either stepped in or i didn't and it would have been possibly even worse than what it was so or it could have been better but i don't know uh so i think that was a message to the fans that and you you notice that because only one of the sisters was credited one one of them so he directed it wrote it but the other one wasn't involved so I found that kind of interesting. I think it was a message to the audience saying this was going to happen. It was either me jumping in and having to do it or they would have taken control and did something completely shit or even worse. Ultimately, though, I hate to say it, but he rehashed too many uh, elements of the previous movies in it. And it, like a, it was a callback to it, many of them. It was basically the whole movie, the premise is to save Trinity, um, which is fine. But at the same time, it's a movie that just didn't need to exist. And um, the one thing that did work really well in particular, I liked how they had um, characters from the past who were their kids. Like, oh, my dad was an engineer and he worked on the, on the ship. And, and now I'm his kid and I'm here now doing the same thing. That was pretty cool. Um, I found that that, that was uh, pretty decent. I thought that was just a smart move. Um, but yeah, there was very little originality in the movie. Uh, very... The, the fights were if whatever they were they weren't that good i think the one thing that did work well in my eyes was the thing where they changed morpheus which i didn't like the idea of him doing that but it worked well in the universe where they said basically it's morpheus just in a different shell like ghost in the shell kind of thing you know what i mean almost where they just had a different body because it was a different version of the matrix reiterated you know whether it be the the oracle whether it be morpheus so that was kind of interesting they had a different version of smith in there didn't really go too well for me it was okay but didn't look as menacing as the original i mean maybe i mean it's just it just feels you know i didn't really have too much draw to them they weren't as iconic as the previous originals you know uh characters i felt on the whole if you're a matrix fan then i recommend watching four but uh if you know uh if not you're not missing too much but you know i'd say if you're a fanboy or a fan just watch it and then go we know what the first three are good but the fourth one is just not that good um and uh what's scary is though is that in the movie the guy who's talking about making the games coming up with different ideas for these so-called games that they were making uh said we can make as many as we want and i also felt like that that was another message saying there was going to be a matrix five and i'm like mm, this is and i suspect there will be a matrix five 
at this point. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Um, but yeah, so it's an okay movie. Um, I suspect the Matrix Five is Matrix Five is going to come out. Uh, it is what it is. Guys, I know there was a lot of FIFA content today in the update. Um, I hope you guys enjoy the likes of Broken Sword. And if you're not going to play this type of game, enjoy it, watch it, see how the mystery unravels. GTA 3, hopefully it helps you out. Um, it's, there'll be shorter videos, like 25 minutes on average or whatever, depending on how long it takes me to do individual missions and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so uh, so that takes us through July. Uh, I'll be looking out for the games that Xbox Game Pass gives us, Xbox in general, on Gold and PSN. So yeah, and I'll be working hard uh, creating more stuff in the background kind of thing. Uh, anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, comment and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We're up to 3,000 and... 300 no 3305 people now at this point hopefully that grows you know slowly but surely it's a uh, it's a sprint not a marathon kind of thing it is what it is um anyway guys uh hit the super thanks button if you want to donate to the channel and all the money will be going towards my pc uh, uh funding and stuff like that so and uh, i will see you next time thanks so much for watching